Okay, are you guys ready for Ted? Are you guys ready for Ted? I don't think anyone's ever ready for Ted. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel. This is Rachel Reads, where I read only awesome books. This book is so completely awesome. I'm not going to say another word. I'm just going to start reading. Are you ready? Let's do it. Ted by Tony DiTerlisi. That's Ted. He's so cute. <laughs> Ted by Tony DiTerlisi. There he is in the window. And there's our main character there. Looks like he's eating a bowl of cereal. The party. Ted blew into my house one Saturday morning. He didn't even knock. I was eating cereal, and as usual, my father was busy in the study. Hello, birthday boy, Ted bellowed. Where are the raspberries? That's what he said. First thing out of his mouth. Sorry, I said, you have the wrong house. My birthday was last week. Oh, he frowned and then smiled a smug smile. I'm Ted. And raspberries are my favorite food. They help keep me pinkish purpley. Do you have any? He looked harmless enough, so I found him some raspberries. And then I sat down to finish my cereal. I was right, it was cereal. So what's next, birthday boy? Asked Ted. Look at him. I mean, who could resist the fun of this guy? He has a button for a belly button. A real button. Okay. I shrugged. Then I remembered my birthday gifts. Well, I'll be right back. A minute later, I returned with Monopoly under one arm and Twister under the other. Father gave me these for my birthday, but he hasn't had time to play with me. And so Ted said, let's party. <laughs> so we did. We ate raspberry cereal and played Monopoly Twister. I knew that this would be the beginning of a fantastic friendship. Yes, Ted is awesome. When I told father about Ted, he gave me one of his funny looks. An imaginary friend, huh? <laughs> I had one of those back when I was your age. Just try not to get in any trouble. Look at Ted being silly behind father. <laughs> Shave and a haircut. A few days later, I asked father to take us to the movies. Ted thought I should look my best. First things first, take your bath and I'll give you a shave and a haircut. <gasps> but kids my age don't shave, I said. Didn't you just have a birthday, said Ted. He was so smart. That's right. Once I was out of the tub, Ted lathered my face real good and gave me a shave. Then he glued bits of toilet paper to my face. What are these, I asked. Tissue plugs, Ted answered. They'll keep your hair from growing back. I mean, your, uh, your hair, your beard. Yeah, they'll keep the hair from growing back. Oh, so that's why father does it. Then it was time for my haircut. I grabbed a chair and sat in front of the mirror. Ted tied a towel around me and snippety snap, I looked like a million bucks. Okay, awesome. Father didn't think so. Uh oh. How, how could you do this? He said. Ted helped me. Don't you think he did a great job? Son, Ted didn't do this. You did. Father then spent the next few hours explaining the difference between real and imaginary friends. And I ended up at the barber where I got the haircut father picked out. And we never went to the movies. Hmm. That's a bummer. Anyway, on to the next portion of the story, the masterpiece. I don't think my father believes in you, I said to Ted after the haircut thing. No, Ted gasped. He must. He has to. Still, I didn't think so, but I had an idea. Maybe we should paint him a picture of us, I said. Ooh, said Ted. We could do a big, humongous, life-size picture of me. I'll bet that would show your father. <sighs> what do you guys think? But what should we do it on, I asked. I didn't have any paper that was as humongous as Ted. The walls, silly. They're so blank and boring, said Ted. And wishy-woosh. Uh-oh. It was a masterpiece. Do you guys see? On the walls. What do you think daddy's going to say? Uh-oh. Let's see. Okay. Father didn't think so. He couldn't believe how much of a mess I had made by myself in one afternoon. That's when I reminded him about Ted. I have had about enough of this Ted character, Father said. Now go get washed up. You're going to bed early while I clean up this disaster. I don't think Father even looked at the masterpiece. Oh, man, that's another bummer. Jeez. 
<sighs> On to the next portion of the story, indoor swimming. <laughs> you guessed it. When did your father become such a stuffy pants? Ted asked me the following afternoon. And what do adults do for fun anyway? I started listing all the things my father didn't have time for anymore. When I got to swimming, Ted's eyes lit up like marshmallows. Let's make him a swimming pool, said Ted. I wasn't sure if a pool was such a good idea, especially after the painting disaster and the haircut thing. So I had a few questions. How do we make a pool? Where do we get the water? And the thing I wondered most was where are we going to put it? Ted had everything covered. Uh, I've got a bad feeling about this. It's easy, Ted explained. We use the garden hose, bring it in through the window, and splishy splash. We could even put it in your father's study. An indoor swimming pool? We'd be the only house on the whole block to have an indoor swimming pool. I held the hose. Ted turned on the water. Father's going to love this. <laughs> Do you think father's going to love this? I uh, don't think so. <gasps> he didn't. Oh, no. Look at father's face. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, I'm scared. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Father was beside himself. I have had enough. I forbid you to ever play with Ted again. No more Ted ever, said father. After we drained the house, Ted told me it was time for him to leave. Oh boy, he looks really sad. But where will you go? I asked. Back home, he replied to the old playground. The whole next day, all I could think about was Ted. I felt pretty sad and alone, so I packed up my Monopoly, my Twister, my cereal, and some raspberries, and I ran away to live with Ted. Father was still steaming mad. He didn't even notice me leave. There's the note he left for Dad. Dear Dad, I went to go live with Ted at the old playground. Please don't worry. The old playground. When I found Ted, I explained why I had run away. Oh, don't blame your father, he said. Sometimes when people grow up, they forget how to have fun. Your father told me that when he was young. My father, I said? Yep. But to him, I wasn't Ted, I was Ned. Boy, the times we had playing space pirates. In fact, your father buried his atomic blaster right here under the slide. Oh, <gasps> you knew my father too? I was amazed. Suddenly, there was a flashlight shining in my face. You shouldn't have run off like that. I was worried about you. It was my father. You were? I smiled. Of course I was. I'm your dad. Now, come on. We're going home. But what about Ted? I asked. My dad stopped. There is no Ted, son. But there is, I said. You used to play space pirates together, except you called him Ned. He even knows where you buried your atomic blaster. Dad was stunned. Ned? My atomic blaster? Father had forbidden us to play. I lost it somewhere. It's right here. I remember. We started digging. Oh, Dad remembers. And there it was, a bit rusty in spots, but it still lit up Dad's face. The atomic blaster had been found. Dad gave me a great big hug, and then he looked right at Ted. Ned, good to see you, my raspberry-loving pal. Dad grinned. And then Dad looked at me. Have I ever shown you how to play Space Pirates? No, I grinned. Then can we play Monopoly Twister? <laughs> so we all went home and played one mean game of Pirates Monopoly Twister. And that is no, almost the end. Look at this. There's the game. Oh, wow. That's pretty wild and crazy. I want to play that too. Okay, that's the end. Let's clap and say yay. Yay! Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time. Bye!